This is contextualization, period one, topic 1.1. Today, we're going to be learning about daily, uh, AP Daily Video 1. Students will explain the context for European encounters in the Americas for, from 1491 to 1607. To understand the context, you will examine the change from and or continuity with preceding historical developments. Hello, I just want to welcome you. Uh, my name is Michelle Marr. I'm a teacher at School for Advanced Studies, North Campus in Miami, Florida. And SAS is a dual enrollment high school located at Miami-Dade College. We are actually housed in the college in Miami-Dade County. So I welcome you. This is our first video and I'm so excited to uh, see all my students out there and, and look forward to working with you on 1.1. We're going to start off with 1.1 uh, and what we're going to learn is the following. We're going to learn about contextualization, which is skill four. This is one of the most important points on a document-based question or a long essay question, which I'm going to explain momentarily. So in unit one, this is your first chapter of your book. Uh, we will begin the discussion with the intersection of various indigenous populations in the Americas. There will be contact with the Euro Europeans later on, and the Africans who were enslaved will also be forced to the New World and brought to the Americas. And contextualization in unit one is this intersectionality we will be discussing as an ongoing theme in AP US history, in which your AP US history instructors will begin discussing throughout our time together in AP daily videos. I will be highlighting important key vocabulary words you will need to know how to be successful and how to be successful on your exam. Contextualization will be tested in the College Board multiple choice questions in order to identify and describe a historical context for a specific uh, development or process. You will explain how a specific development or process is situated within a broader context. In addition, your document-based question, which is also called the DBQ, and I'll be saying the DBQ, and your long essay question, which is called the LEQ, will assess your ability to describe a broader historical context relevant to the topic of the question or the prompt. The contextualization point is given in both DBQs and LEQs. You may also want to uh, think about contextualization when you answer your short answer questions, uh, also called the SAQs. Both of those also assess the skill. So according to historian James Henretta, historical events make more sense when they are situated alongside similar events. So historians know that at any event can only be understood in context. Two levels of context, an immediate and short-term context, and a broad long-term context. So what I'm covering in unit one, you'll, you're going to be seeing the same topics throughout our time together as a continuing theme of United States history. So what is context? It refers to the historical circumstances surrounding this larger event that we study in history. So ask yourself when studying AP US history, how might these larger events have shaped this event, especially as you read through your chapters? Usually two to three sentences will explain contextualization in your essay. I like to explain to my students, we are setting the stage of the introduction of a document-based question or a long essay question. I usually find these in the first part of your paragraph of your introduction. You may relate this history to something you learn in unit one to something you learn in unit two. Okay, and AP US history starts in 1491 and continues to the present. So once again, everything you're learning right now will be following along in some uh, in next chapters that we're gonna be studying. So what's an example of unit one? Can you place a Colombian exchange in a global context? How do the interactions and adaptations among societies across the Atlantic fit into the larger story of world history? What evidence can you find in this chapter to support your position? When you read chapter one in your textbook, you are going to have some ideas of the Columbian Exchange and how might you use this in a future essay. Contextualization of the Columbian Exchange. So it is a process of bringing new crops and new sources of mineral wealth to Europe from the Americas, and that will facilitate the European shift from feudalism to capitalism. These contexts among Europeans and various Indian societies and Africans resulted in the Columbian Exchange. Let's look at an example. So who benefited from the Columbian Exchange? So from Europe, also products were brought to North America. So um, 
we had pumpkins, turkeys, tobacco, sweet potatoes, pineapples, beans, potatoes, and peanuts, just to name a few. And at the same time, some products came from Europe to North America. We had coffee beans, peaches, pears, bananas, onions, grains such as rice, wheat, oats, and barley. So when, what went from North America to Af I mean, from Europe would be cattle, horses, pigs, and sheep. And these are going to be very significant for the growth of the population, especially in the Great Plains. And ho the horses will be very significant there. And on the other hand, uh, which is very problematic, uh, diseases will also come from Europe to North America, such as smallpox, influenza, measles, and typhus. So when I think of these diseases, uh, these, unfortunately, um, for the Native Americans, did not have immunizations to these particular diseases. And unfortunately, over 90%, we understand, uh, were uh, killed or died because of these diseases. So let's practice. Um, what I like to do in my classroom is after each unit, I start with something called an oral exam. So oral exams are used as a writing assessment after each unit. And so what I do in my classroom, we use old LEQs, long essay questions that are released from the College Board website for each unit. And the students work in small groups of two to three students. And we try to answer these 10 questions um, that have been previously asked. And then we do a discussion in the classroom. Each group does one question. What I really like about these oral exams is it forces the students to listen to their, uh, their peers. And then we also assess their skills of these uh, different topics. Now with the oral exams that I use in my classroom, we're looking for context points or contextualization points and to make sure we practice enough before the exam takes place at the end uh, of, the, of the year. So oral exams give practice for the points that we see in the College Board rubric. So oral exams after each unit are usually long essay questions and you can find those on the College Board website, which I recommend you do. And we also use LEQs um, at the beginning of each uh, unit. I mean, I'm sorry, at the, after each unit. So I would start doing them in unit two. So what should we take away? So the contextualization example in their interactions, uh, Europeans and Indians, or we call them also Native Americans, asserted divergent worldviews regarding is issues such as religion, uh, gender roles, family, land use, and power, which we're going to learn about in chapter one in your textbook. And then if we want to have more examples, I recommend you read your chapter and then look for points that you'd want to use in your context exam contextualization example that you might be writing for unit two. And if you need any more help, uh, we have AP questions on the website and in the AP classroom that you might want to consult. So please, for homework, I'd like you to start reading your textbook where you're going to see more illustrations, maps, photographs, charts, primary documents that are used for your AP exam. And also short primary documents are good reading practice to help you with your DBQs, SAQs, and multiple choice questions. I want to thank you so much for listening, and I look forward to seeing you on my next video, which is going to be 1.2 when we look at the Native American societies before the Europeans came. Thank you again.